In this first video on Gypsy and flush settings, I want to show you some drawings that I uh, hand created a few days ago. It's better that I show you a, a drawing than to go right into showing you how it's done on the ring. This particular ring is made of silver and I'm going to be using cubic zirconia Swarovski style stones where they cut, they're very hard, about 8.5 on the Mohs scale. And this is the kind of a ring I get from my caster. They're being steel, magnetic, tumbled, and they're clean from the casting. And this is the kind of a ring I'll be working on in the next video using my favorite ring clamp. On this specific uh, drawing, I'm using a diagram showing you how to determine the depth of the stones. Very easy. And this is a large, a large uh, cubic zirconia. It's about 12 millimeters, but I only use it for demonstration purposes. As you can see here, this is the depth of the stone. And when I'm finished hammering and cleaning and polishing it and bright cutting on the inside of the gypsy setting, this is where the table should be in line with the surface of the ring. There is only a small indentation into the metal. That's going to be holding the girdle of the stone. How am I going to do that? It's very easy. I'm going to be using this. Well, it's going to be. It's, this is my high-speed steel burr. But for large, for demonstration purposes, you're going to see how I cut into the drill, into the metal. And this is my carbide. Actually, this is my carbide burr I'm going to be using. It's also known as a 156C. Where they got the name, I don't know, but it works. And this, again, I'm going to be using it just in this configuration. And where the teeth end, I'll show you up close, where the teeth end is where the table of the stone will be in relationship to the metal of the ring. And again, I'm just going to go over, whoops, wrong way around, sorry about that. It's going to be just in this configuration. The table is in line with the metal of the ring. On the next dim uh, drawing I have, and if anybody wants to have these drawings, just email me at jerrylouis18 at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to send you the whole list of uh, drawings, about 20 of them, I think, at the last count. And this is a hammering position, large view. This is my favorite tw uh, 85 gram. Uh, hammer and I'm going to be hitting it on this direction one two three and four that by when hitting the four spots the stone will be tight then what I'm going to do next is hammer in between going around and filling in the spaces then on the third drawing I show you where I'm going to be doing a bright cutting with my right sided onglet number two graver you have to have a hammer that is pretty well like mirror finish. I just touched it up before I made this, uh, this video so you can have an idea of what the hammer head will look like. And when it's smooth, you don't have to worry about using an, uh, an emery wheel, but I sometimes will use a pumice flat wheel of 180 grit. And I will just hammer little areas in between the one, two, and three, four step. I come in very, very gently and a light tapping. You don't need a heavy, like, uh, pile driver going onto the metal. Remember, you're working on a two and a half millimeter stone, maybe a three millimeter, so you don't have to pound the guts out of it. Just go very gently. And what I do is I don't hammer straight down. Go back to this other drawing for a moment. I don't come down right where the stone is, I come back on a slight angle back. So I'm actually pushing the metal over to the girdle of the stone. I don't come in right on over the stone edge or the metal edge. I come back a bit and when I'm hitting it, it's forcing to the point of least resistance. It's pushing the metal over and it's pushing it down. So this is exactly where I'll be going to be hitting right on that point. Again, coming in on the other side, coming in and hitting chest. So that little overhang 
He's going to grab the girdle of the stone and secure it into place. And just little taps all the way around. And believe me, it's not that hard to do. Oh, by the way, we had a discussion on Orchid a few days ago that you have to have this opening underneath for the culet to be seen. So after a couple of years of wear and tear, you'll have a room for that dirt and grunge to, excav uh, to exit, not excavate, uh, to exit from the bottom of the hole where the culet is. Do not have that culet coming below the metal. When I bought this ring, I made it into rubber molds, the original design had, it was very thin, but the jeweler, in his great infinite wisdom, decided to put little jump rings at the bottom, bottom of each individual hole. Why? To give it more depth for the stone to sit into and against the metal. And this is 13... 13 stones will go into this ring. When it's finished, it is absolutely beautiful. So what I do when I start setting the stone, I will 